So, I don't think you can escape noticing that this is, this is the season, as the expression goes, tis the season, it is the season of giving and receiving, both of which can present issues, of course. Dating way back to more than 2,500 years ago, in the Buddha's original teachings, there was a great emphasis on giving and receiving. The Buddha and his monks actually existed on the generosity of those he taught. They had no possessions other than their begging bowls and the robes that they wore. So they would offer teachings and the members of the community would put whatever food they could into the bowls. Perhaps they offered them medicines if they had, or cloth for a new robe. And that was the exchange. And that's actually what's come down to us today in the tradition of these meditation centers, these Dharma centers, wherever possible, the equal exchange of teachings and then the generosity of the community in exchange. But the actual practice of giving and receiving is not always as easy as it might seem. When people would come to the Buddha and ask to be taught about meditation, he never started them until he taught them first about generosity. Because without a heart that is open to the needs of one's fellow beings, the Buddha could see that the practice of meditation would not only be difficult, but could be quite uncomfortable. Because as you have just experienced, when you sit down and get quiet, and the busyness stops, who knows what's going to come up. And whatever has been going on, not only just in this day, but for the many, many days prior to this, and in the Buddhist belief, many lifetimes before this, things are going to come up. So the Buddha wanted people to not experience suffering in their meditation practice. So he began with this practice of generosity, relinquishing, letting go, being open, to the needs of all beings. So I wanted to bring you this evening two stories that are in keeping with the season. One particularly is, and one is a story that I can absolutely guarantee that happened because I was there. And this was a number of years ago when my wife began running a high fever. And at night, the fever would spike up to 103, 104 degrees, and it was quite uncomfortable for her, and we became concerned. The doctor said, let's watch it for a few days, and then we'll decide what to do. Well, this continued, night after night, 103, 104 degrees fever. And he said, no more fooling around, you're going into the hospital. So we checked into the hospital, and after another week, now we had a whole team of doctors who didn't know what was going on. Tests, poking, probing, taking blood, looking, asking questions, still no one had an answer. Now my routine during this time was to get up early, walk the dog, and then go cross town to the hospital and stay for a few hours. And then it was time to come back across town, walk the dog, check the emails, and then head back across town to the hospital. Now on this one day, since it was raining, I got into a cab and told the cab driver the address and said I was going to that hospital. And he asked me if I was a doctor. And I said, no, I was going to, to visit my wife. And he said, oh, what is, what's wrong with your wife? And I said, well, nobody seems to know. She's been in the hospital now for about two weeks and no diagnosis, 
No treatment is just a mystery. And the rest of our ride was in silence until we pulled up in front of the hospital. And then he reached up to the rear view mirror where there was this long strand of prayer beads hanging on the mirror. And he took those beads and he passed them back to me and he said, please give these to your wife from me. They will be helpful. I have been praying with these beads for many, many years and Allah has always been good to me. And then when I went to pay him, he said, no, no charge. He said, this will be my way of giving thanks in advance for your wife's recovery. Well, that night, Susanna, my wife, her fever went down and it never came back up again. And she was then released from the hospital there never was a diagnosis. There never was a treatment. There never was any sort of medication. And no one to this day knows what that was about. Now people have asked me many times, well, what do you think about these prayer beads? And the only thing I could think of was something I used to hear in my old neighborhood when I was growing up. Couldn't hurt. And then there's a story that I read in the Times just this week, and it just seemed so appropriate and right on for the season. The story says, A few days ago I was on the F train riding uptown. At West 4th Street, a young man boarded with a boombox. He explained loudly and enthusiastically, I'm trying to stay out of trouble tonight, so I'm offering you a dance, like we do in the Bronx. Only a few of us looked up. And then he plugged his iPhone into the boombox and proceeded to dance his heart out. This included a few backflips, trapeze moves with the handrails, and body spins on the ground with just one hand. By this time, all eyes were glued on him. A young boy next to me yelled out in sheer delight, Wow, that's amazing! We all shared his sentiment. Many passengers gave generously when he walked by with his donation container. Just then, at the other end of the car, a homeless-looking man boarded with a plea for help. He was disheveled and without any dance routine or music act to offer. All he had was a wish for kindness and an outstretched hat, one that remained empty among this group of recent donors. That was until just before the doors were to open at the next stop. The dancer went right up to the homeless looking man poured out all of his earnings into the outstretched hat and said, Merry Christmas, man! Tis the season. And doesn't that just say so much more than all the ads that we hear on television and all the promoting of what is supposed to be the season? That's the season. Let's sit with that for just a couple of minutes.